course we know an apple tree is a plant and if we go down the taxonomical ranking we reach angiosperms which are flowering plants and if we go further down we find a family of plants called rosaceae or the rose family which is a medium-sized family of flowering plants that includes over 4,000 known species in 91 genera genera being the categorization that comes above species on the taxonomical ranking so for example canis is the genera that encompasses wolves jackals coyotes and domesticated dogs of which domesticated dogs are one species although they look so different but that's for another time anyway in the rose family we find let's take for example three genera malus pyrus and rosa within the rosa genera are multiple species of roses in pyrus we find multiple multiple species of pears which are closely related to apple i mean you could probably tell from how they look they're in the same tribe and sub tribe and they share a common ancestor to quote plantandfood.com apples and pears evolved from a common ancestor around 35 to 50 million years ago about 20 million years after this ancestor diverged from other fruits in the same family such as strawberries and peaches then finally there's the malus genera which is made up of over 50 species some of them being malus versae or the bitter tasting wild apple originating from central asia or modern day kazakhstan the crab apple from europe or malus sylvestris and malus bacata or wild apple originating from what is today siberia it is believed that 4000 to 10000 years ago through the silk road not that one which were a network of pathways connecting the east mainly china and the west which is europe malus versae the wild apple spread to europe and hybridized with crab apples as well as other apple species to form domesticated apples over the years through artificial selection by humans choosing certain properties like size and shape we end up with different varieties of modern day domesticated apples scientific name malus domestica you can imagine through trade immigration and so on apples spread across the world eventually to most countries and regions one region that has taken well to apples is china is they are the country which produces the most apples in the world by a long shot for example in 2017 based on data from the food and agricultural organizations statistic division china produced over 40 million metric tons of apples that is 40 billion kilograms to beat out the u.s in second place with 6 million metric tons <laughs> to find out that malus versae is the ancestor of almost all malus domestica the apple genome from the golden delicious variety was sequenced revealing some other interesting things like that apples and pears have 17 chromosomes which you might wonder can they be bred you may have seen a apple somewhere which is claimed to be a hybrid of an apple and a pear but sadly it's just a pear hybrid of two asian species of pears so no apples and pears cannot make babies it also revealed that apples have more genes than humans apples have about 50,000 and humans have 25,000 number of genes though does not mean high complexity for example the nematode carno habititis elegans which is about one millimeter in length has more genes than a fruit fly or the fruit fly is clearly much 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 more complex The thing about the little shape of the whirlpool that forms when water is running down the drain it kind of resembles the shape of the apple they have a unique cusp if you draw an outline of an apple one could immediately spot it it's almost like everything is being pulled to a singular point singularity like a black hole there is a mathematical theory called singularity theory that is used to explain everything from black holes light that forms at the base of a pool and even droplet break up to quote the leading professor of the paper cusp of the apple Biological shapes are often organized by the presence of structures that serve as focal points. These focal points form singularities where deformities are localized. Every apple is characterized by the cusp, the new or dimple where the stalk missed the fruit. In the same paper, researchers of course embarked on a journey to find out how the apple gets this shape. Apples at different times of maturity were taken and dissected, and the formation of the cusps were recorded. The cusp was shown to grow because of the different rates of growth 
between the bulk and stalk regions of the apple. Its stem and core grew slower than its cortex. At peak growth, the cortex grows five times faster than the core, causing it to rapidly expand around the stem. Some apple trees are tripod and not diploid. Ploid is referring to the set of chromosomes. The pollen is sterile. You also get apples that are seedless. But what if you wanted to plant or get more of these apples? You can't plant the seeds since well, they don't have any seeds. Thankfully, apple trees can be grafted, which is kind of like an organ transplant and very invaluable to farmers. However, not all plants can be grafted. As mentioned before, apple trees are angiosperms. They are flowering plants with seeds developing in ovaries forming protective fruits. Angiosperms, the flowering plants, can be broken down further into two groups, dicotyledon and monocotyledon plants. Cotyledon is a seed leaf within the embryo of a seed. Thus, with the suffix mono and di, you should be able to infer the meaning. From the plant sprouts, the seedlings of monocots have only one leaf, for example, corn or grass, and dicots have two, for example, apples and peach trees. One of the important differences between them is cambium, not cadmium, which is a tissue from which xylem, phloem, and cork grow via cell division. It is responsible for the growth of roots and other parts of the plant as it can differentiate into this tissue. Cadmium is a meristematic tissue, which means it can differentiate from other types of tissue. This allows it to have a regenerative capacity. As a result, plants of this tissue can be grafted as the tissue can ruin the place where the grafting has occurred. It was thought for it to be impossible for monocots to be grafted. However, there's this study that shows that they can indeed be grafted, but at the embryonic root. You may now be asking if a rose in the same family as apple trees and they too are angiosperms and I said that angiosperms are plants that produce flowers and fruits, why don't roses produce fruits? Well, they actually do. Usually because of poor pollination, they don't, but they actually do produce fruit. They produce edible fruit called rose hips. It can be red, orange, yellow or black. Apples also come in different colors. You get red, yellow, and green. Then some that have a variation of let's say red stripes, yellow stripes, and so on. Green apples, you can probably guess, are green because of chlorophyll. Yellow apples are yellow because of carotenoids, and red apples are red because of anthocyanin. The reason carrots are orange is carotenoids, which are red, yellow, and orange organic pigments. They're also found in flamingos, shrimp, and butternuts. Anthocyanins are found in strawberries, roses, and cherries. And distribution of these pigments can create varying apple colors and distribution comes down obviously to genetics for example the pigment that makes them red is regulated by the transcription levels of mdmyb1 which has multiple alleles alleles being an alternative form of the gene md1 md2 and md3 md1 is the dominant one controlling anthocyanin synthesis in the skin of the apple which makes it red and apple dna or the apple genome can fit in 650 megabytes of data apples also come in a variety of sizes with the largest apple recorded by guinness weighing 1,849 kilograms that is 4.07 pounds 0.29116766 tone it was grown by Kisato Iwasaki in the land of the rising sun, Japan. Apples are also 25% air, which makes them buoyant, and that's why they can float on water. I guess you could build a raft of apples. And the science of studying fruits, cultivation and such, fruits including apples, is called pomology. Apples come in many different varieties. Arcane, Ambrosia, Kansas Black, Ashmead Kernel, Autumn Crisp, Baldwin, Blondie, Blushing Golden. Cosmic Crisp, Early Gold, Enterprise, Golden Delicious, Manny Smith, Rhymes Golden, Honey Crisp, Macintosh, Nero, hold on to this one, Opal, Yates, Zest, and so on, with each one suited for a different task. For example, for breaking, you need a firm apple that can hold itself together while cooking. A good apple here would be the Granny Smith apple, it's crisp and firm. And for something like making a sweet cider, you need an apple that's very sweet. A good example is the Honey Crisp. One thing you may be wondering is, Orchards get closed basically, I don't say all the time, but orchards, orchards can be closed anywhere and there might be an apple there that is native to the area or something that you cannot get anywhere else and if that apple orchard closed and those trees die, you never ever get to taste it.
but there is a non-profit organization called Lost Apples who go to abandoned orchards to locate lost varieties of apples. Many thought they were gone extinct. In 2021, they discovered 20 new one varieties, one of them being the Nero, which was thought to have gone extinct. Anyway, like a hero in the third act, hopefully you learned something new today. Subscribe.